Hello everybody, I'm Brad the Guitologist here uh, with another exciting video. Uh, in this video, what I thought I might do, I've got a lot of projects kind of in the pipeline right now. Uh, a lot of amps I really probably should be working on. What I think I might do tonight is set up this guitar that I found at the Goodwill. This is from that video where uh, I went down to Lexington and hit a bunch of Goodwills and whatnot and found this for $9.59 that I think the I think the store employee didn't really want me to find or buy. So let's see uh, if we can set this thing up and give it a little bit of test and see if I struck gold or if I busted. Let's see how quickly we can do this. First things first, these old strings really need to come off here. So let's cut those. Taking these strings off. Look at this. <laughs> and plus, that's just a completely different uh, piece of machinery than, than the rest of these. You notice this one's got, you know, it's I mean, it's like it's almost like ready to come out of there. That one's about the same way. Not quite as bad. We'll get all these off. Thank God they didn't uh, lock the strings in. Man, I hate that shit. All right. Get rid of the old strings. Let's poke all these through. If I can. Sometimes this is a pain in the ass too, especially on cheaper guitars I've noticed. The string ball ends tend to uh, kind of get stuck into the metal, sort of. So what I do is just get a little screwdriver, the littlest one I've got. I don't know if that's, it still may not, may not work. Nope, there went the, uh, <laughs> there went some pieces of the tuners. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. This might be a bigger pain in the ass than I anticipated. Well, surely the big one, there we go. I was going to say, surely the big ones will come out. Those are usually the easiest. Because at least you can... You can press those down and they kind of won't bend on you. That G string right there is way, way bigger than it needs to be. That's a way the wrong gauge. I've just got too big of an implement here. This is too big. Do I have a smaller one? There we go. Yeah, that's smaller. Maybe that'll work. There went the E, there went the B. Good. Hey, they're going. Let's see if we can get it from this side. Sometimes you can break it loose like this too. Nope, yep. There we go. There we go, finally. All right, so there's the strings off. All right, with thrift store guitars and, and the like, it's very often the case that uh, they're so dirty, uh, you don't want to use up all of your guitar polish uh, spraying around and all that mess. Just, just get a damp cloth, uh, warm water, uh, with a little bit of uh, Dawn dish liquid or something on it, and just clean, clean the thing. You're not going to hurt your guitar by doing this. Might as well take these knobs off of here because I'm going to not only clean, but I'm going to get a matching set anyway, so I'll get rid of those. And actually, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to plug it in right now and just see if it even, see if it even has any output. But it would be good to know right now before we put any strings or anything on it because it is a strat, so we would have to take the whole thing apart if it needed anything electronic. There we go, price tag's gone. Now, no one would ever know it was $9.59. I kind of like the smiley face. I might leave him. Adds character. 
you need some character in your guitars especially with a Strat since it's like about 99% of all the other guitars on the planet <laughs> already uh, you can see here this thing is a sandwich body look inside there you see the kind of the strata right there so you know it's a sandwich body that ba what that basically means is uh, it's a lot of pieces of wood kind of laminated to, um, on top of one another like a big sheet of plywood basically but a real thick one I actually like the look of this fretboard it looks at least like it might have a pretty decent feel to it and it's really filthy look at that the layers of crap coming off of that. Man. Look at the difference. Look at the difference here. Here's here's the part that I've cleaned, and there's the part that I haven't. Look at the difference. Actually, I don't know if that's filth or if that's actually uh that might actually be fretboard lacquer. That's what that is. That's fretboard lacquer. That's some terrible lacquer. All right, here's kind of the short list of issues. Uh, the neck is going to need to come off and probably be shimmed. It's got this space here you can see there under the neck got a space there I need to inspect this crack right here to, to make sure it's just a uh, just a finished crack which I suspect it probably is uh, very often you get finished cracks right there just because of the differential in uh, uh, pressure at that spot um, this pot right here is kind of kind of sluggish to turn it's like I don't know it's like it needs some lube or something down in there so we might this might be one of those instances where a small spray of some uh, uh, WD-40 or maybe a drop of 3-in-1 oil or something on the shaft will work its way down in there um, I'm not going to take this bridge apart I don't see the need I just basically get my painters brush here and brush all the brush all the mess off of it And it looks all right after a little brush. These are good to have around for stuff like this because you can just brush the whole guitar. Get in little cracks and places you can't normally reach. Makes quick work around pots and stuff too. <clears throat> yep, that pickup's good. Yep, those are good. That one's good. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can tell the switch is kind of iffy. Nothing a little spray won't probably solve or even just working it back and forth a little bit okay so electronics are good I think well let's sweet and test the okay volume pot works uh, this would be for the let's see so that tone pot works And that tone pot works. So the tone pots work, volume pot works. I don't have to take that apart. Let's get the neck off uh, and we'll reattach it and shim it and inspect it. And we also need to do something about these tuners. You can see we have a couple of missing uh, tuner grommets. We need to dig up something that will work. And this should this should have some tuner parts in it. Yeah, see, we got grommets and stuff galore in here really um, I 
right. I'm thinking they're going to be in here if anywhere. I don't want to use these because these are for something vintage, I think. I'm not going to use those on this. That's the other thing. I might have a lot of things that will work, but I, I don't necessarily want to use them on this project. All right, the problem here is the size of the hole uh, through which the shaft passes. Uh, your typical size spacer or grommet has a lot of play in it. If you just try to drop that in, it's not really doing anything. This is kind of what I would call groverized as far as the size of these holes, and that requires a, a larger spacer. And the problem is I don't, I don't know if I have a full set of this size. I'll look and see somewhere else because I don't definitely don't have them in this box. No wonder there were three of them missing. Uh, I just basically just touched this one and it fell apart in my hand. It's and it's just plastic. These are made of plastic, so uh, yeah, these definitely have to go. I'll have to either get s some new spacers or take these tuners completely out of here and uh, fix some new ones where I know I've got all the parts. Okay, so let's clean up our mess and take these tuners off. And we'll find some different ones. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and take this whole neck off. That way we can just work with the neck and we'll have to drag the body around with us. Yeah, see, pretty much as I suspected, there's there's nothing wrong with the pocket. It's just a that's just a finished crack. That's a finished crack as well. Those are those are common. Don't do this to me. Well, we got a stubborn screw. There's always one. There's always got to be one. It's like the asshole that ruins the party. There's always got to be one. End of the night, everybody just wants to go home and go to bed. And there's always got to be one drunk asshole. And that's what that screw is right now, is being, a, being the drunk asshole. I've had my share of moments where I was that drunk asshole. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, here's one of my boxes of uh, spare parts. And in this one is just uh, this is just tuners and right off the bat boom right there look at that as long as they're uh, six to a side uh, which they might not be let's, let's see that's yeah I think those are six that's exactly what I need those are exactly like the ones that came off of there almost very close I would be willing to bet that the screw holes will be the same as well. I may not use them if the screw holes aren't the same. Let's, let's check those. Actually, see if there's any better options. Yeah, those are gold. Okay, I found another set that I'm pretty certain is uh, going to work here. These are six to a side, and these even have the, uh, the screws on the top. I need to make sure if they're going to fit, and if they're not, I might have to uh, widen the holes just a little bit. Um, it's possible I might not have to, though. No, I don't have to even do that, so they're they're going to be perfect. Okay, I have these new tuners installed, and we need to drill some uh, pilot holes, and I've just got the smallest smallest bit I could find, so what, a 1 16th. Um, drill some pilot holes. Now, if you wanted to get real um, persnickety about this, you could... Uh, you could measure, you know, the maximum depth that you could go to with this, but I'm not going to go very far anyway. I'm just going to eyeball it. With a guitar this cheap, I'm not that worried about it anyway. And if you don't go deep enough, you got to be careful, because if you don't drill your pilot holes deep enough for something like this, uh, you can very easily snap off the heads of a screw like that, and then it's just a big pain in the ass trying to get the thing out with pliers after that. Snapping off a head of a tiny screw like this pretty common actually more common than you would think I know you guys like it's like a NASCAR race you guys are like dude 
break the screw off. I want to see you try to get one out. <laughs> I know you are, because that's exactly what I would be doing. <laughs> Dude, please just fuck up in some way so we can watch you try to fix it. <laughs> Not going to happen, guys. Wrong show for today. Hopefully. Knock on, knock on wood. Not that I'm superstitious. Okay, let's get these on here. You don't have to tighten these up real tight or anything usually. Um, you could get them finger tight, but what I usually like to do on, on uh, nuts like this um, is get them finger tight and then just give them like a half a turn with, uh, with the pliers or whatever, wrench or whatever. And that, that last half a turn just kind of keeps them from, uh, you don't want to over tighten really because, I mean, if this was a really important guitar, you definitely don't want to over tight because a lot of times that can crack the finish on a guitar. Uh, hardware is really bad about that. You got to watch out for that. So if you're, you know, if you're putting Grovers on your nice Taylor or your Gibson or something like that, uh, which I don't really advise you to do anyway because you end up having to drill more holes than it's worth. Uh, but if you do ever do something like that with a nicer guitar, uh, definitely don't over tighten uh, nuts like this because it can definitely, and I've learned that the hard way in the past as well, first starting out doing this stuff, that you can cause uh, finished cracks on your headstock. But anyway, there are the new tuners. They look pretty good, look a hell of a lot better than the old ones. We do have some extra holes, uh, which I'm not that bothered by. If I wanted to get really uh, bent up about it, I could come in here with some filler, wood filler, and fill in the holes, and uh, even get like a little artist brush with some uh, uh, with some finish on it, and kind of finish over them in a kind of an artistic way to hide those. But that's, there's no there's no need on a guitar like this. I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so we've had the neck sorted out. Now it's time to clean up this mess, make some room. Uh, and I guess we can probably get some strings on it at this point. If you're first starting out working on guitars like this and you don't have big uh, parts, um, you know, inventory to kind of draw from for these sorts of projects, uh, unfortunately, the costs can kind of be prohibitive in most cases to turn something like this around. In this case, with only $9.59 initially invested, you'd probably still be okay. But if I had spent, you know, $50 or something on this, I'd probably be pushing it a little bit to go out and buy, you know, a decent set of tuners and whatever else it might need. So it's good to have um, a stash of parts from which to draw. And you can only really get a stash of parts just from doing it over time. Uh, you know, like the ones I took off of this Lotus, you know, they may have at one time just been a, been parts for my uh, for my drawers to kind of populate those for some future project. But in this case, this guitar has been spared because I already had parts. All right, let's get these. Always save screws. Screws are like uh, screws are like the oil that keeps the engine running. If you don't have screws, um, everything can grind to a halt. Little screws like this too, if you had to go buy those at Stuart McDonald, um, see what are they charging for screws now? It's something silly. It's like, it's probably like 35 cents or something a piece. I can't even remember. But last time I bought screws and had to have some something specific, I was kind of appalled. I was like, oh man, I don't want to pay that for a screw. But that's the way it is, man. If you need it, and they've got it, they can charge you pretty much what they want. That's why you have to save all your old hardware. Even these little plastic spacers, these little plastic grommets, even the broken one, I'm going to save those as well. Even though I have three, only three of them, I might get another guitar like this in the future that has only three of these. And rather than changing all, the whole set of tuners, I might just grab these and say, oh, you know what, I can overlook that little break right there. I'll pop these on sell that guitar with some spacers, at least it'll have something. Um, so I'm a, I'm a total pack rat, unashamedly a pack rat, and you have to be. You have to be if you're gonna do this.
Okay, better clean up before uh, before another troll comes along and says, Man, I would never take my guitar to you because look at the state of your bench. <laughs> oh, dude. Some of the some of the comments, don't get me wrong, the vast majority of the comments on my channel are actually really nice compared to a lot of the other channels I've seen. And I, I, I definitely appreciate all you guys and the and your comments. Uh, don't don't ever stop commenting. Um, but man, a few times it's just like, what the fuck is this? You get so many um, people kind of crawling out of the woodwork just to just to take pot shots. Um, and and I, it's it's kind of a it's an ego thing. I know it is. You know, I probably did the same thing maybe when I was young, a little younger. You know, you want to show how much you know or something, and you're like, oh, you know, this is the way you should really do it or whatever. Which, if I invite that kind of thing, like uh, the last video I did, you know, where I was like, oh, you, if you guys know any better ways of doing this, let me know. And I got, like, tons of awesome comments on that. Um, but even criticisms, I don't mind criticism at all. As a matter of fact, you guys already know I invite that stuff. Um, but it's just when it's the tone um, at which it's done. Like, if you're going to criticize, that's totally cool. Uh, and I can take it. I'm, I'm a big boy. Um, but when the tone gets kind of nasty, you know, and you can tell when the tone's nasty. It's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. Um, but it just kind of crosses over into into nastiness. And it's like, it's like blah, blah, blah. you know, I would have done it this way and I would never let you work on one of my amps or one of my guitars or something like that. Like even right now, it's like, why don't you have a mat down there? Well, and the <laughs> which I didn't mind that comment so much because I really probably should have had a mat on that other guitar. Uh, but the thing is, the guitar was mine. It wasn't a customer's. If it was a customer's guitar, I never would do that. Um, and yes, I may sell it to someone who becomes my customer at that point and then it's their guitar. So why your, your next question is why would you risk marring it up well um, probably in that case laziness um, you know I, I can lay down something here and I probably will since I'm now that I'm thinking of it but the bottom line is this is a nine dollar fifty nine cent guitar that's all I have invested in it at this point um, so I'm not that concerned about it that last one I might have, you know probably should have had something laid down for it but the bottom line on that one too is it's my guitar so and I was pretty gentle with it just because it's wood on wood doesn't mean it's dinging anything um, now granted if this was real dirty or if it had a bunch of you know crud on it or something and you got grinding around or sand or you know what I mean uh, but at any rate enough of that let's slap some strings on it Okay, let's do a test. Uh, you guys can time me. Let's see how fast I can put a set of strings on a Stratocaster. Uh, we'll call this the Guitar Olympics. Uh, and you guys can upload a video. Next time you do a string change, I invite you to upload a video and see if you can beat my time. I'm sure you can. I'm not the best in the world. But uh, let's see. I'm going to use these GHS Infinity Steel. Um, and I have my tools ready. So you can use a string winder and a, a pair of pliers and my hands are off and three two one go <laughs> already out of the gate i have lost <laughs> okay first string gosh when you're in a hurry everything gets so much more difficult now watch this be one of those that it's uh extremely hard to feed through that one wasn't too bad yeah I've already lost this I can tell I've seen guys do it a lot quicker than this one string oh that was stupid that was already a dumb move do you see what I did wrong I picked up a different tool. Never pick up a different tool. Just string them up and then do the one tool at the end. That's the way it's done by the pros. Okay. Let's 
three. Let's see. Oh, you also have to tune it up to pitch at the end. And for bonus points, don't use a tuner. Let's see how close you get it. This is definitely going to be a beatable time, there's no doubt about that. No doubt about that, because I'm only on my D string. Guitar Olympics, man. It's a new thing. I challenge uh, everyone. I challenge, uh, let's see, who do I challenge? Who are the YouTubers? Uh, I don't know. I challenge, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Chapman. Yeah, Chapman, if you're watching, I challenge you. Do you do this and see how fast you, you got? See what kind of time you got, man. And uh, which uh, McKnight, that McKnight fellow, and music is win. Uh, if any of you guys are watching, uh, feel free to accept the Guitar Olympics restring challenge. Has to be a Strat, though, no other guitar. Strat or Strat style. Who else? Who's, who are the other prominent YouTubers? Scott Groves. Scott Groves, you, you're welcome to try to give it a go. Uh, who else? Uncle Doug. Man, come on, dude. New, new videos, Uncle Doug. We're all waiting on them. Everybody loves your channel, dude. I mean, I'm just a poor imitation of you anyway. You need to come back and... To do your thing, man. Everybody misses Rusty. Everybody misses your uh, your dry wit and manner. And uh, why don't you come back and do the guitar challenge as well? Guitar Olympics. Guitar did Olympics. Okay. Boom. 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 Oh, come on. Can't even grip them. Okay. <laughs> what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? How did I do? 
Okay, enough of that nonsense. If you recall, uh, when I first got this guitar, there was an issue with uh, how the neck was bolted on, and the neck pitch was just way off. Uh, well, I've got it bolted on correctly now, and, the, and it's eh, strings are still a little bit on the high side for my taste. Uh, I think I can get this out though with a neck adjustment, so let's uh, let's adjust that. Uh, now this has a bit of a forward bow, and the strings are a bit high because of this forward bow. And I want the neck to be straight, and that's going to drag the neck backwards, and it's also going to lower those strings as that happens. Um, in order to do that, I need to tighten the truss rod, so that's a righty tighty. And this one's. This one's about where I want it to be now, more or less. String height's still a little bit high, uh, but I do have some play that I can work with down here on the bridge. Uh, so I may be okay without, without shimming this. I don't think I'm going to bother shimming it. I think I'm going to uh, let it stand as is. Alright, time for some knobs. Um, and just like about everything else around here, I've got about a million and one knobs, but I don't know if I have a complete set of anything. That's the only problem. Uh, I know I have I know I have a set in black, but I don't want black. Surely I don't want black on that. Nah, this is gonna have to be. It really needs to be the cream colored ones like that. And I don't think I have a set of those. Okay, which do you prefer, the the slightly off white cream uh, or this? This one, which is kind of closer to like an Olympic or something. Or Snow White. Yep, I agree. The cream. But the problem is I don't have a full set of cream, I don't think. Cream! <laughs> Alright, here's another Sterilite box full of knobs and such. And ooh, that looks... Pro ooh, there's a volume knob. So I've got a tone and a volume. Ooh, what's that? That's another tone! Ha! <laughs> Look at all the different ways to make a tone knob. Look at this. Differences are subtle, but they are very real. So these two are close enough, I think, for government work. Cool. It's good to have knobs. It's good to have a knob. <laughs> Isn't that right, Phyllis? Okay, here we go. Finishing touches time. Oh, except the only thing I forgot to do was clean that damn pot. Why didn't you guys remind me to do that? Shit. See, on a Stratocaster, too, if you've already... I mean, it's possible to get it out without taking strings off, but it's still not... It's not fun. Jeez. Uh, I think it's not as bad actually as it was at, when I first got it. At first, it was like sand or, or something was in there. But that that's not too bad. I can deal with that. Um, I like to orient knobs so that when uh, the volume's all the way up or the knob is all the way up, that you can read. You can read the. Uh, you can read the the lettering from the playing position. I wonder if the, you remember that R&B artist, Tony Tony Tone, or Tony Tony Tony, or whatever it was? I wonder if they had three tone knobs <laughs> on their guitar player's uh, Stratocaster. See, this is the kind of useless banter you have to come up with if you're doing something like changing an Ibanez string in the middle of a set. <laughs> funny reference to a different video. You won't get it unless you've seen that one. That's why you have to subscribe, folks. That reminds me, I've been meaning to do like a question and answer thing. I, you guys are constantly coming up with really good questions and stuff, and um, I feel like I should answer more of those in kind of a more of a formal setting. You know, I see other YouTubers do that kind of crap, and I'm thinking, well, is that something I want to do, or is that cool, or is that uncool, or, you know, how should I proceed? But I think actually it's probably a good idea, and it just kind of gave me a chance to sit down and uh, not put a lot of effort into a video that still might get a few hits. 
<laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you guys in the comments on this one, feel free to ask me just whatever. Nothing's off limits. Uh, if it is off limits, then I just won't answer it. Uh, but yeah, feel free to ask me questions or whatever. If you've, something's been burning on your mind and you've uh, been too afraid to ask up until now, here, here is your out. Some of you guys who insulted my tuner on the last video were quite right to do so. It's not a great tuner. Okay. That's actually not bad. That's not too bad either. That's passable. See, if it's that close, I mean, the, the pressure of your, your vibrato, uh, you can actually do slight bends and things to keep a guitar in tune while you're playing, even if it's out of tune. Most professionals you'll see at one time or another will do stuff like that, and you'll kind of notice it when they do it. And that's usually right before they reach up to the headstock, you know, mid ingve sweep or something and you never even knew they tuned but they like tuned all six strings <laughs> and it made you feel like shit in the process it's like why can't i do that and usually if you have a good ear you can tell when when a note like that is sharp even without the tuner um, and what I usually like to do, and this, you know, I'll continue my uh, intonation lesson from the last uh, video uh, because, you know, a lot of you did point out that this is not a strobo, this is not a stroboscopic uh, tuner. This is not a strobo tuner, so it's not going to be extremely accurate. Um, but the thing about any fretted instrument, uh, like I said a moment ago, and also really I should, I probably shouldn't do this sitting down like this either necessarily, although it doesn't change the intonation. It, the intonation is really based on the distance between your uh, saddles and your and the nut of the guitar. It, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do um, with the up and down distance, although if your string action is really high, anytime you press down on the string, the further you have to press it, basically it's the same as if you are bending the string. Because if you think about it, you're actually doing a slight bend uh, every time you press down to fret a note. So if your action is really high, you do have to compensate for the high action uh, in your intonation. Otherwise, it will be way off. But that's another reason why you can never get a guitar 100% intonated. I don't give a damn if you've got those squiggly frets or not. Uh, you can have all of that stuff you want and it's still a guitar is never going to be perfectly uh, intonated uh, for every player, for every situation. Uh, every, and every chord that you form, uh, whatever it is on the neck, uh, is you're going to be applying different pressures to different strings. Um, you see my little... there pricked my finger on my Guitar Olympics trial run. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, you're putting different pressures on all the different strings and at different places. So if I do a bar chord up here, for instance, you know, I may play this chord, this same, it might be the same shape of a bar chord that I play here and here, although I might apply, just because of my little quirks, I might apply a different pressure to one or more of these strings at this position than I do at this position. So this position might sound way out of whack, even though the guitar is technically intonated. You could put it on the most expensive stroboscopic tuner uh, in the world, and in the right or wrong player's hands, uh, it may be completely out of whack. So that's why you really have to, if you, really want your guitar to be intonated for you and the way that you play, uh, you have to do the work. You have to at least be present while the work is being done. Now, I could I could take someone's guitar and I could set it up uh, the way I think most players kind of typically play, but if they're one of these weird players who has uh, just, a, just a heavy hand on the fretboard, 
there, it may be completely out of whack and it might not be my fault. It might be their fault and it might not even be their fault. It might just be the fact that we haven't really properly communicated together to get it right. So, um, so keep that in mind as well. If you if you take your guitar home from a music store and you think, oh man, these motherfuckers ripped me off. You know, this thing is still way out of, you know, the intonation is still way off. That might not be true because the guy who intonated your guitar, he might have intonated it to the way he plays and the chords uh, that he has grown accustomed to intonating a guitar to. And then when you take it home, you're a different player and you're putting different pressure on the strings and, and whatnot. So, you know, uh, just keep that stuff in mind before you go blaming somebody <laughs> for a problem. But what I like to do is tune by ear. So I'll hit the harmonic at the 12th fret for say these two strings. And for now it doesn't matter if it's in this flat position because I'm just demonstrating. But imagine I had it set up in my hands while doing this and that would be ideal. But but this is, pr is good enough for, for what we're um, for what I'm showing you, but so I'll tune this by ear, these two strings to that harmonic. And just get it as perfect as I humanly know how to get it. Then I want to hit instead of this, I want to hit this one also, but and it's not perfect. Now see, I can change the intonation of this string simply by pressing more or less light, lightly. Here, you hear that? Listen, listen closely. You hear how far off that was? That's a lot closer, right? And that's pretty much dead on. That's because I, the first time I pressed down, I was pressing way the hell down. Then I let up a little bit, but I was kind of bending the string. Then I brought the string back to equilibrium and uh, was pressing it really lightly. And right there, it's pretty much in tune. Now what I want to do is drop down so that basically what we're playing here now is a, uh, a third. So we're playing Essentially, here's your E, your low E. There's its octave. We're playing the major third. Major thirds are a big, a big pain in the ass to get intonated correctly, and that's why I try to intonate with them. See, wah 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 wah. So that's not in. That needs to come down. I need to lighten my pressure to get that closer. Because see, as I press down further, it gets further away from where I want it to be. So I want it to be, uh, I want the note to go down in pitch. So therefore, I want a lighter touch. Uh, or alternately, if I can't get the touch light enough, uh, then that means I have to change the intonation. I have to move this saddle to compensate. So that's exactly what I'm going to have to do on this one. So if I want a lighter touch, and, and if that needs to be lower in pitch, that means it, right now it's too sharp. So that means that this distance from here uh, to the nut, which is that way obviously, uh, so that distance, or we could even say the distance from here to the 12th fret, uh, this distance is too short. So I need to elongate that distance. So this saddle needs to go that way. All right. So this is the way I fine tune intonation after I've kind of set it close uh, with a a tuner. See, that was way high. I'm going to actually go ahead and take this this uh, screw out completely. Okay, I'm going to take this screw out because um, that spring needs to go. That spring is not doing me any favors. On a low E string, on a Stratocaster, nine times out of ten, like I said, man, you've got to get you. You got to get rid of the spring because you can't get the intonation right without getting rid of the spring. <sighs> At least that's been my experience. I'm sure there will be a troll along any second now saying, "Where the hell you get rid of the spring? You don't get rid of the spring." 
I don't want to discourage you guys from from harping on me because it is you know I don't mind it I don't mind it too much just as long as you do it nicely it's, I'm okay with it uh, the only thing you run into a lot of times with uh, screws this screw is probably going to run into that string by the time we get this thing intonated and you'll see what I mean just here in a second if it gets back far enough this string could possibly be dragged backward into that screw and I've, I've had that happen quite a lot as well where I had to cut down the low E screw so that Ibanez was not the first time that's happened okay I'm getting to the point where I'm almost closing off my hole see what I mean can you even see that there you go Yeah, see the hole that the string's going down into? It's almost to the point where it's closed it off. Right, let's try that right there, because I don't know. Surely it can't go back any further than that. You see, it's still jumping sharp. Even with as, as far back as I've got it now, it's still jumping sharp. And there's no way, there's no way that that spring could uh, fit in, in there right now there's just no way that spring you can't compress that spring enough for that to fit in there so even though I've removed the spring uh, and gotten it beyond the springs capability um, it's still not intonated so what does that tell you Let's back it up that I mean that's that's really the limit of what I can do because if I go back any further it's just gonna chop that that string as a matter of fact, and I'm going to have to leave something to get the string in and out of there. So, uh, if the intonation is slightly off, um, I'm going to try to fix that with the string height. Because I do still have a little bit of string height that I'm going to take off here in just a little bit. Uh, and that may change it slightly. Okay, so I have these two strings tuned relative to one another. So now I want to fret the note at the 12th fret on the A string. A little bit sharp. And the third is a little bit sharp as well. So let's go ahead and tighten tighten this up and we may actually need to take out the A strings spring as well now that's damn close right there all those strange beats uh, that I was experiencing before are gone on the third and they would really be gone if I pick this thing up because what's happening is as I push this down I'm actually slightly pushing the neck down as well uh, so when you pick it up to playing position and you tune it this uh, intonate it this way you're gonna get a slightly different uh, feel but that's perfect as far as I'm concerned, it, it won't get any better than that. Uh, I could use the fanciest stroboscopic tuner in the universe, and it's not going to get any better than that from uh, by doing it by ear and with a cheap-ass tuner like this. So anyway, that's how you in intonate a guitar. And when you actually, uh, you can do the rest of the strings in the exact same manner. Okay, uh, here's the D string. I actually have uh, gone ahead and checked the string height on all the strings. So my string height is set, so I've got no more variables. And I did end up backing up this uh, low E saddle just a hair further. And I, I only have just enough to get the string through now. So let's move up to the G. See, 
listen to that. Listen, listen carefully for the beats. Now, even though I'm, I'm pressing downward on that string, it should not beat like that, that fast. Listen for that. It's going to be probably hard to hear because I don't. I'm not sure of the fidelity of this microphone. And by the time you you know downloading it on YouTube, you might have all kinds of other stuff in the background. And I've got a cricket going and all kinds of crap now. But um, but you should still be able to kind of hear that if you put headphones on. It's about that fast. That and I want that beat out of there. is dead on. Listen to that. Listen to that. If I bend up. So that's that's on right now. So see I'm bending up to the note, so that means I need to uh, shorten that distance. So this is back too far according to this fret. And also to this fret, it's pretty, it sounds dead on, according to the third though. So in this in this case, it's a judgment call. Which one do I go with? Do I go with the third, or do I go with that fourth or that uh, that fifth right there? So you see what I mean? It's it totally depends on which chords you use because if these are if the, um, the frets are even slightly dented or worn or out of place or anything at all, and if, unless they're absolutely perfect, every guitar is going to have quirks. It just, it's just the way it is. Even your highest end, you know, PRS and Gibson or you name it, SIRS, whatever it is, if you've worn them for a while and you've played them and loved them for a while, they're going to have quirks. This one I've just exposed a quirk. That tuning is dead on. That's got a little beat in it. That's got a massive beat in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the difference between this third and what we're hearing here. So uh, I think what we might do is uh, tuned to the fifth on this one. So let's let this out just a little bit. The beat's considerably slowed on that fourth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's more like that now. A little bit slower than it was. Yeah, that one's definitely uh, that's 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 a quirky string right there. So I'm not going to be able to get that one dead on uh, really anywhere. So we're just splitting differences now. Now, one thing I'm sure that I want, I do want that octave to be in. So let's check the octave. I'm having to bend upward to get the beat to stop. Stops right about there. But listen to the third. It's pretty dead on right where it's at. According to this, the octave, I have to go 
up in pitch to get it correct. Same with the fourth. Same with the fifth. Watch me bend this string and listen. You hear that go in? Now if it's in, if it's in tune, open, when both strings are open, but then I fret something, and I have to bend upward to get it to pitch, uh, that means that this saddle still needs to go that way. So, But the wonderful thing about guitars uh, and stringed instruments in general that are not, you know, string percussion instruments like a piano or piano forte or um, harpsichord or, you know, stuff like that is that you can bend notes on a guitar. So this instrument, more than really most other instruments on the face of the earth besides maybe the human voice and the violin, is is one of the most expressive instruments you can pick up and for that reason because you you have vibrato capabilities uh, glissando capabilities uh, just like you would have with flutes and other woodwind instruments you know there's so much to, to guitar and this is why we love the guitar right uh, there's so much to it there's so much to learn and this is just part of it setting up your own instrument and being able to intonate it properly is something you should be able to do yourself and if you can't do it yourself or you're still not comfortable doing it yourself take it to someone and see if they can intonate it uh, with you present so that you can you can play some of the chords that you normally play and how you play them and have the person intonating to say oh okay well that's a bit high right there so you need to bring that note down and then he ha might have to split the difference between some of your other chords as well for the way that you play so okay I realize already that this video is very long you've already gotten way more than you bargained for but let's take a look at this uh, amplifier that I also got on that trip down to Lexington <clears throat> I got this in a uh, antique mall for four dollars and fifty cents on the same day <clears throat> that I got the guitar from a Goodwill uh, so let's see what kind of little rig I've gotten myself here we'll, we'll play the guitar through our four dollar fifty cent amplifier <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
right, so that concludes our video on our $15 uh, thrift store guitar rig. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know it's been a long one. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, do be sure to uh, hit me up with your questions. I may do a Q&A video on the next, uh, next one or in the near future. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for subscribing, and y'all take care.